Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we'll be taking a look through issue 46 of the Paperback Fanatic, edited by Justin Marriott, a fantastic new paperback fanzine that's just come out. So sit back, relax, and let's take a look. Okay then, first of all, a little word about the design of this one. So it's designed by Bill Cunningham of Pulp 2.0 you might recognize his trademark style and it's just fantastic to look at really really well presented um it's great stuff so well done first off bill for another um well designed magazine so yeah number 46 so it's been a little while and um justin's really pulled out all the stops here and he's got a huge selection of writers um pulling together for the new look for 2023 um and uh here's a little look through and we'll have a obviously we're not going to go into detail on every single article here because there's an awful lot here but I do want to give you a feel for what this one is like so uh, look at some recent uh, paperback pub publications so the latest issue of Men's Adventure Quarterly that great book there um, Reagan's and Rocket Ships a fantastic one that one by Ryan Hughes um, this one here looks at the John Falcon Infiltrator book um, latest couple of issues of Paperback Parade uh, Gary Lewis's uh, um, paperback fanzine over in the States. Um, a look at a few prolific YouTubers who cover books, um, a few familiar faces there. Um, then we got uh, Masters of Horror, um, Stephen Jones, um, about his uh, book on uh, Lionel Fanthorpe, um, which is fantastic. Um, Robot Roy, <laughs> Tories and Books. This is a look in that um, cover artist. This one is on, um, of course, Brian Bolland, one of my uh, favourite cover artists. I always loved his. Um, Judge Death, uh, Judge Dredd and Judge Death work in particular, Judge Anderson, you know, he was one of the great, great artists. He did other stuff as well. But these are the covers he did for that, uh, the World Card series, which has got some uh, fantastic stuff in. Scoundrels and Buccaneers, Haunted Love. You see, almost all genres are being covered here. Um, yeah, <laughs> recollections uh, here of James Doig. He's um, downsizing his collection, which is something a few of us have considered. Um, swamp Thing or Swamp Related Books, um, another popular subject for collectors, Book of the Film, something I, I love myself, Movie Times, Horwitz oh, Paperbacks. Um, this is a, I don't know a lot about these, but um, they are quite fascinating. Uh, a look at the development of the paperback by looking at um, uh, the development of 1984. So this is a classic published by Penguin. I've covered this myself quite a few times on the channel. And I, it's one of the authors I collect all the different editions. 1984, I've got maybe eight editions of it. But my best for this is Dare the Triffids, which I think um, has had 18 different Penguin editions over the course of its lifetime, of which I've got about just over half now. Um, Pulp Horror, so Pulp Horror Digests. Here's a little article here on uh, Mickey Spillane, a great author. The Horror, so uh, some classic horror stuff. So this is horror in the in the uh, with a hint of men's adventure. Looked at here. Here's the uh, Conan article. So this asks the question: What do you read after you read all the Robert um, E. Howard uh, Conan novels? Which ones do you go on? Because obviously the character carried on for a long, long time by different authors. And you'll notice with the um, uh, magazine, everything is, is in full colour. It really is beautifully presented. Um, Hot Lead is uh, sort of the Western side of it. So look at the different uh, aspects of the Western genre. Um, Past Blasters. These are all Brian Aldous titles. A Reader's Guide to. And then we've got Jeffrey Household. A classic sort of crime author. Um, here's my little bit on um, recent prices for rare paperbacks on eBay. Um, I do videos on this, of course, as well, but this is like some of the highlights over the last few months. Um, and future issues, I'm going to try and do it specifically on a genre or an author. It might be a bit more interesting, give a bit more insight. Looking at the, the early 70s Kung Fu phenomenon. As you can see, some, some classics there. <laughs> Did anyone buy Jove? A visual guide to Jove. Jove paperbacks here. I think we've probably all got one or two in our collections. 
North Sea Scramble oil rigs in British fiction. So once again, quite a niche subject to cover, but you'd be amazed at what people do sort of, um, sort of concentrate on sometimes when they do do, um, when they collect vintage paperbacks. And uh, this is one of those, uh, you'd never think of it unless you read it sort of subjects, but look at them all. It's a popular, popular little subject. Even the uh, the Doctor Who there, the Loch Ness Monster. Milton's books. He said, uh, Nigel Taylor studies the role that classic genre paperbacks played in the films produced by Milton Sabotsky. Um, and Amicus, of course. So there were some of the famous ones there, the um, Portmando um, movies that they were. Of course, Milton Sabotsky produced both Dalek movies, but... Um, they didn't get their sort of tie, they'd never had tie in paperbacks at all. Um, the first Daleks book was an adaption of the BBC TV series, and the same um, with the Dalek Invasion of Earth, which came later. Um, they didn't have movie tie in editions, sadly, which would have been great, wouldn't it? These are all pretty cool. Some stuff you might not have seen here before. Good stuff. I see there's loads to it. There really is. Another great one. Now the screaming starts. That one used to be so common, but you hardly ever see it anymore. The Monster Club book. This one looks at the sort of the spaghetti westerns, which I was really, I found this really good. However, I was amazed that they didn't have um, a copy of um, the movie tie-in edition with the photo cover for The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. Um, it, there's the um, American one, but the UK one is published, I believe, by Tandem. And it's one of my absolute favourites. And then once they'd done those, they did do a little follow-up series, which are quite nice. And yeah, these have got the Christos Akilos covers. Um, Andrew Garve now, a little feature on um, Andrew Garve. I've got quite a bit of his in Fontana. I don't remember seeing these 70s pan editions. I haven't got any of those. But they're so typical of the year, aren't they? Great stuff. Yeah, mine are all a lot earlier. My, I got like, must have been when he first started, I think. Uh, this was a really fun bit. So Justin wrote to all the uh, contributors and said, that if there was one book that you could rescue from a house fire, what would that book be? And there's some great answers in here. So um, yeah, another another great little seg segment. This. Then a few sort of potted um, capsule reviews of a few, just a few vintage paperbacks, all across the board. And there we are. How cool is that? So I think that is a fantastic, fantastic relaunch of what's proven to be, uh, well, it's the definitive mag at the moment, published in the UK on vintage paperbacks. I love the magazine size and format. I think it lends itself much better to uh, than the smaller format, and it just feels more like a, a, a decent magazine. Um, Sizable, full colour, definitely the way to go. And I think for £7.50, which is what these cost, that's really not bad value if you're into collecting your vintage paperbacks, which, uh, of course, we all are. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed that little look through Paperback Fanatic. Do please share your support. I've got links to buying the magazine from for Amazon in the description down below. If you've enjoyed today's brief video, do please give it that thumbs up. Do please hit the subscribe button if you've not already for regular vintage paperback coverage. And I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.